Hi everyone and welcome back to some more math with Miss Pellegrino. In this video we're going to be looking at simplifying fractions. Before we get started let's do a problem of the day to get us warmed up. Your problem of the day is Isaac bought five tenth pounds of candy at the candy store. Zoe bought two fifths of a pound of candy. Who bought more? Figure this out on your own, pause the video to work the problem, do the best you can, Think about what we've learned about decimals and fractions so far this year. All right, let's check your work. We know that Isaac has 5 tenth pounds of candy. Now that's written as a decimal, whereas Zoe's is written as a fraction. It's really difficult to compare fractions versus decimals, so why don't we take this decimal and turn it back into a fraction. We know that that five is in the tenths place, so if I want to turn it into a fraction, I'd put five over 10 to show that we have five tenths. Now Zoe has two fifths. Now that's still kind of hard to compare because this one has 10 pieces in a whole, whereas this fraction only has five pieces in a whole. When you have two fractions that you're trying to compare and the denominators are not the same, it can be tricky. So what we can do is we can take this 2 fifths and turn it into a 10. Think about what we learned yesterday with equivalent fractions. 5 to 10 means I'd have to multiply by 2. So if I multiply my denominator by 2, I multiply my numerator by the same to get my missing digit. 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths. Now that the denominators are the same, it's a lot easier to compare. 5 tenths versus 4 tenths. Well, 5 is clearly bigger than 4, so 5 is obviously the bigger fraction. Isaac has more candy. Good for him. Now, you also may remember solving this a different way. You might have learned a trick last year. I call it the butterfly trick, where instead of writing out all of that with your denominators, you might have learned that you can just cross multiply. 5 times 5 is 25. 2 times 10 is 20. And whichever side is larger is your bigger fraction. We have 25, so 5 tenths is the larger fraction. Same answer, just a different way of doing it. All right, now that we've warmed ourselves up, we're thinking about fractions again. Let's get started with today's review. Now, yesterday, we worked on equivalent fractions. Basically, these two fractions would be written differently, even though the amounts shown are the same. We have the same amount of blue in each picture. But in here, we've only split this shape up into three equal pieces, and two of them are colored in. Over here, we have six pieces, and four pieces are colored in. We would call these equivalent fractions, because even though the numbers are different, the pictures shown are the same amount. Yesterday, we talked about how you can find equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same number. In this case, two times two will give me four, and 3 times 2 will give me 6. As long as I'm multiplying by the same number for my numerator and denominator, that number can be anything. Today, we're basically doing the opposite. We're taking this fraction and turning it back into this fraction. So whereas yesterday we multiplied, today we're going to do the opposite. To go from 4 sixths back to two thirds, we're going to want to divide. Just like yesterday, we'll want to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. In this case, it's again a two. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. So basically, the same thing we did yesterday, except just the opposite. Instead of multiplying, we divide. When we do this division, we'll be working to find the simplest form of a fraction. Simplest form is when you've divided a fraction down as far as it will go. 
It's still an equivalent fraction, but it's written using the smallest numbers possible. There are a couple steps to do this. Step one is to find the greatest common factor of your numerator and denominator. And step two is just to divide. So let's do an example. Let's say I'm trying to take this fraction and turn it into its simplest form. Well, we know from the last slide that simplifying fractions means we want to divide. But what am I dividing by? That's where this step comes in. We want to find the greatest common factor of the numerator and denominator. And that'll be the number that we divide by. To find the greatest common factor, you'll want to list all the factors for each number. Factors are the numbers that you can multiply to get this number. So ask yourself, what are the different ways we can multiply to make 6? Well, you should think of 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. These are two factor pairs that, when multiplied, will get us to 6. Let's do the same for 18. Now we know that we can always multiply 1 by that same number. 18, we can also get to 18 using 2s. 2 times 9 will get me to 18. Can we get to 18 using 3s? Yes, 3 times 6 will get me to 18. Can we get to 18 using 4s? Nope. How about 5s? Nope. All right, so we're good with that. Now that we have all of our factors listed, we'll want to go through and see which ones these numbers have in common. So I'll do that in yellow. I see both numbers have a 1. Both numbers have a 2. Both numbers have a 3. Ooh, we have a lot in common and both numbers have a four. Okay, that's a lot of numbers they have in common, but I want the greatest. So out of all those numbers I circled, which one is the greatest? Well, clearly it's six. So I would say my greatest common factor is six. I want to divide both my numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor taking me back to one-third. Six eighteenths and one-third are equivalent fractions, but one-third is the simplest form. This should sound familiar. You definitely did problems like this last year in fourth grade. But let's do another example just to help you review and get those steps back in your mind. Let's do the example nine-twelfths. To start, we'll want to find the greatest common factor of both 9 and 12. So what are my factors of 9? Think to yourself for a moment, pause the video if you need to. What are the different ways we can make 9? Well, 9 has two factor pairs. I can get there using 1's. 1 times 9 will get me up to 9. I can also get there using 3's. 3 times 3 will get me up to 9. I can try other factors to see if it'll get me there, like 4s, 4, 8, 12 does not work, 5s, 5, 10 does not get me to 9, 6s, 6, 12 doesn't get me to 9. So I can stop with just my two factor pairs. Next, let's do the same thing for 12. Can you think of the three different factor pairs that'll get you to 12? Pause the video for a moment if you need to think. Well, we know that we can get to 12 using 1's, 1 times 12. We know that we can also get to 12 using 2's. Count by 2's. How many 2's does it take to get to 12? It'll take us 6 2's. What about 3's? Can we get to 12 with 3's? Yes, 3 times 4 will get us to 12. So now we have all of our factors. We'll want to go ahead and find the greatest common factor. So let's look at which ones they have in common. Let's see, they both have ones, they both have threes, and that appears to be it. So between one and three, which is the greater of the two? Well, definitely our three. So our greatest common factor is three. Step two is to divide my fraction by that greatest common factor. So let's take nine twelfths and divide both my numerator 
and my denominator, remember doing the same thing to top and bottom, by 3, taking me back to 3 fourths. So 9 twelfths is equivalent to 3 fourths. 3 fourths would be my simplest form. Let's do one more example, and then you're on your own to work some of these on today's assignment. Let's do 7 fourteenths. And for this one, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do all the steps on your own. What would be your greatest common factor? And then divide your numerator and denominator by that number. All right, let's check this one together. We can get to seven using ones, one times seven. But if I try any other factors, none will get me to seven. Seven is what we call a prime number. There's only one way to make it. 14, however, is not prime, so there's more than one factor pair here. Obviously, one is going to be one. Remember that one times that number is always your first factor pair. We can also get to 14s using two, two times seven. Right away, we can see that this, that these two numbers have ones and sevens in common, and seven is clearly the greater of the two. So my greatest common factor is seven. Now, we need to divide our numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor. Seven divided by seven is one, 14 divided by seven is two. So the simplest form of seven fourteenths is one half. These two fractions are equivalent. You'll have more problems like this on your assignment for today. Just keep in mind your steps of greatest common factor and then divide. Good luck, everyone, and I'll see you around. Bye for now.